Salutations, everybody. It is Maddie here today. You know I'm gonna start off this video. Come on, say it, say it. Come on. I know you want to. Come on. <laughs> Look, the only reason that YouTubers like to remind their audience that they're right is because people are so quick to remind me of my near perfect review, Fallout 4 is disrespectful, or whatever the heck I said years ago but no one will tell you what you did right. So I gotta sit here, someone's gotta be the hero of the day and let you know when I'm right. So uh, when it comes to Doom Eternal Wastelanders, your boy was spot on. Now a little birdie did warn me about Doom Eternal, but that did not happen for Wastelanders. I, I sort of deduced that just based off the public actions or lack thereof from Bethesda Game Studios. Anyways, as I'm sure you could tell, Fallout 76's Wastelanders has been delayed out of 2019 into early 2020. We're gonna be going over the latest blog post from Bethesda Game Studios, reading up on all that's changing in Fallout 76, a big update that's coming next week, and overall, just how this can set a bright future for the game, and it's a good step in the right direction for Bethesda once more. So, let's get into it. The update will be linked in the description down below. Let's start off with Wastelanders. We've been hard at work on Fallout 76 this year, including our biggest free update yet, Wastelanders. We're excited about how Wastelanders is coming together. It's going to need more time to be the best, most polished update it can be. So we are delaying its release to Q1 next year, so the first quarter of next year. We continue to reevaluate and change our processes to make sure the work we're doing hits our quality bar and yours. We apologize for this delay, but know it'll be worth the extra time. Wastelanders is turning out to be one of our largest expansions we've ever done, and it changes the entire world with human NPCs returning. We'll be sharing more details over time, but here's a first look at some of what's to come in Wastelanders. And now you'll see some screenshots that Bethesda provided, five of them of Wastelanders, nothing in the terms of gameplay details, more so just character models, location changes, that sort of stuff. What excites me about that first paragraph is not only that they understand, hey, we need to delay this because if we get it wrong, then that's it for Fallout 76. And for a lot of people, obviously they already called it quits on this game, so they know this is probably their last chance to get things right with this game and pull in as many people as possible. But number two is them saying it's one of, if not their biggest expansions yet. Think of the great and gigantic pieces of downloadable content Bethesda has made in the past, right? We have, of course, Shivering Isles, Far Harbor, are instantly two that come to mind, the Dragonborn DLC from Skyrim. I mean, Bethesda has released some really sizable expansions in the past, all of those I mentioned being very good, very fun to play. So I'm happy that they're sort of reworking the game with Wastelanders. I think I may have been drastically underestimating in my head, I never really vocalized it, about what Wastelanders would have been. I thought it was gonna be, you know, maybe a 10 hour story, a couple of quests peppered throughout this very large world, but it sounds like they're actually filling up the map with Wastelanders and this is gonna become more of a traditional Fallout game, which is really, really exciting. If it's one of their biggest expansions yet, I mean, that is so good to hear. What I heard about Wastelanders though was actually that the issue was not story or writing or dialogue, which is really good to hear. It was just general performance, which is why the delay happened. So you can rest easy knowing that some of the storytelling apparently is pretty good. And that's what we've been looking for from Bethesda. A lot of us have really wanted that from them. So I'm happy to see them taking that RPG route and taking it seriously. Hopefully it pans out in the final product. I did mention an update coming next week. Let's get into that. Private Worlds coming soon. We're happy to announce our work on the service for private servers is complete and will be launching next week. The ability to play in your own private world with your friends has been the number one community requested feature and we're thrilled it's finally coming. Our goal for players who purchase this service is to offer something for everyone, not just for those who want a private server. Additionally, in the future, you'll be able to mod your worlds. Stay tuned for more information on the service in the coming days. Okay, so good and bad. There are private servers coming. They did mention that they will be moddable, so Bethesda has figured out how to mod these servers, which is so, so good, right? Because that was one of the other draws for 76, was the base game was so bad, people said, I'll wait for private servers and mods and make the game good on my own. And I think 76 can really take off with this combination of Wastelanders, mods, and private worlds. However, they said they're charging. And if history has taught us anything about Bethesda and their atomic shop, they aren't very good at pricing things off the bat in a fair manner. And that really stinks. 
The other thing is, I don't know if these are like private service you rent and you can hop in and out of for a monthly cost, or you pay, we'll say 10 bucks and you have your own private server that you can do whatever you want with. That would be interesting. I don't know why Bethesda would charge for this, but not Wastelanders, which is now their biggest expansion because they could very much look at it and say, hey, Wastelanders may end up being a sunk cost if it's a free update. Whereas, hey, these free worlds, maybe that'll pull in some people in general, but maybe they have the reverse view on it. I just personally look at it as in the terms of resource investments, wouldn't you want to get money on the Wastelanders update? But hey, I'll take it for free. Don't get me wrong. I think they're really counting on people coming in for this Wastelanders update though, and making sure they have like private worlds ready and that they would have this big update coming out alongside it. I think they are really banking on 76 making a resurgence in 2020, which is interesting because I read online that Anthem was going to try to make a resurgence with sort of a relaunch. And if that's the case, then we're going to see two of the worst games in the last year and a half going for bounce backs around the same time. And personally, that'll be interesting to watch, especially amidst the busy competition. Have we gotten to that yet? Once again, Bethesda has delayed out of the fall of 2019 into the busiest part of the year in 2020 thus far, where we have excellent titles like Final Fantasy VII Remake, The Last of Us Part II, Cyberpunk 2077. I mean, that's just to name a few, right? There is so many good games, Animal Crossing, Watch Dogs, what have you, Dragon Ball Z, Kakarot, like the list goes on on how many cool looking games are coming out, but yet, Bethesda has now added Doom Eternal there. Now they're putting Wastelanders in there. So it's gonna be a competitive time and maybe the chance 76 had this year where nothing's really happening this fall, right? We have Call of Duty, The Outer Worlds, Medieval, Death Stranding, Jedi Fallen Order, and it would have been Doom or Wastelanders. And that's still a lot of games, right? But not nearly as many and not nearly at the top tier quality, we'll say, that Q1 2020 is offering. And those games are much bigger, right? They said The Last of Us Part 2 is going to be very big. Final Fantasy VII Remake is naturally going to be very big. Cyberpunk 2077, need I say more? These are huge investments in both time and, of course, money. So, with that being the case, Bethesda's fighting for the consumer's time even more than they would be this time of the year. But the benefit Wastelanders has? It's free. Bethesda is also changing challenges, atoms, the atomic shop, and you. We love that there are so many types of players within Fallout 76, and one of our primary goals is to reward everyone no matter how you play. This includes our approach to earning atoms through challenges and the types of items to unlock within the atom shop. Our approach to these items at launch was to keep them purely cosmetic, but after looking at all the data, it became clear that to consistently deliver content that keeps Fallout 76 fresh and exciting for all, we need to rethink our approach to the Atomic Shop. While we had many ideas on what to add to the Atomic Shop, one of the ways was the direct result of the community's feedback. We heard from many of you who want some items with real utility. Starting in April, we began adding items such as repair kits, scrap kits, collectron stations, and a working refrigerator. Yes, the $8 one, I think it was. These have since become the most popular category in the Atomic Shop. We're also still working on all the previously announced items and new cosmetic categories. We want to create an Atomic Shop experience where players feel good about spending their hard-earned atoms. To make the system more fun and engaging for all players, we plan on reworking parts of the challenge and reward system next year to be clearer, more fun, and more impactful for all types of players. Of course, players can also buy atoms, and we're careful with everything we add to not upset the game's balance. Our main objective is to avoid a situation where players can spend money to gain a competitive advantage or make the game worse for other players. Even more so, we want the system that allows players who do choose to buy atoms to make the game better for others, not just themselves. With these principles in mind, we make careful decisions about the items we offer to keep it fair for everyone. Now that's all well and good, but if you know it in that first paragraph where they say, we were looking at the data and realized we needed to rethink the Atomic Shop, that was very clear that they were seeing a lot of visits, but next to no purchases. So they have to create a more fair Atomic Shop system. And I always said, since the beta, I loved how Fallout 76 was very generous with their atoms. And I understand that's sort of the currency that keeps the game alive. There is money coming in through there and they do want to encourage people to buy those. But look, I've played games with generous progression systems that allow me to get involved in their store, but I still ended up paying for it because 
I enjoyed the product. I enjoyed the, the service that they provided me. And because of that, I wanted to invest more in the company and give them my money to support them, so to support what they're doing, but also because I was enjoying it. Fallout 76 sort of puts you in handcuffs and says, hey, we're gonna front load you with atoms. Look at all that you can spend like a mobile game. And then afterwards, once you're out of atoms, you're just sort of left looking at the new rotations of atomic shop items coming in. Now, I thought they had a really good idea when they originally had survival mode in. For those who aren't aware, they actually removed that from the game, but they had survival mode challenges and inside survival mode, you would unlock guns for completing certain challenges. But the issue with the challenges in 76 was that they were very checklisty, we'll say, and not engaging and, and sometimes very odd, like reviving a friend who's drowning in the water. I think that was one of the pioneer scout challenges. And it's like, who, how, why, how does this happen? Like you have to like orchestrate all of this and it's not fun, it's not engaging, it's not organic to the gameplay system. It feels finicky, it feels weird. And so I'm happy that they're taking a look at the challenges because I've long said that this has been one of the biggest flaws for this game and that it desperately needed some sense of reworking. Lastly is the conclusion to Bethesda's little letter. We still have more updates coming in 2019, including previously announced fixes to the existing game and quality of life improvements many of you have requested. We hope the extra time on Wastelanders will allow us to deliver on many of these fixes this year. We are also still working on new events, the legendary player system, a public test server, perk loadouts, and so much more to come. This was the stuff that I read originally in my prediction about both Doom Eternal as well as Fallout 76 Wastelanders, where I was noting the silence of both these games and that these features, a lot of them were announced for 2020, meaning it was kind of strange that there was information on the 2020 updates, but nothing for 2019. Thank you all again for your incredible support of our studio and Fallout 76 this year has been a rewarding journey for us and your love of the game has pushed us to do everything we can to make it better and better. We love hearing your stories, they list a couple of stories, and we love seeing what you create with Phono Mode, our favorite being the album cover art show. We hope you're as excited as we are for everything to come. We're doing it all to ensure Fallout 76 remains vibrant and growing for years to come. So they wanna keep 76 alive, that's no surprise. It's a good business platform if they do manage to turn it around. But ultimately, I'm just a little relieved that they're taking this more serious than I thought, right? It's bigger than I expected from the sounds of it. And I was really hoping that if it wasn't ready, based off what I heard, it seems like it wasn't that they delayed it because it has the chance to be good. It has the chance to be very good and offer stuff that even Fallout 4, the last real mainline Fallout game, which kind of failed on the RPG front, funny enough, and 76 has a chance to outwork that and give us a better story and give us better choices and consequence. That's kind of crazy, right? That's an exciting prospect, I think, as a Fallout fan. So I really hope Bethesda does get it right. I'm, I'm very excited for that update i think it really has a good chance of bringing some fans back and bringing some joy back to fallout but ultimately it makes this fall on a personal note really empty like are we ready for the outer worlds and like eight playthroughs of that game because what else is there to play now right jedi fallen order and i think the list ends there for me oh pokemon right but like it is such a short list now this is one of the least busy falls i've ever had in the last I'd say four years of doing games coverage like since Fallout 4 dropped every fall I have been up to my ears and work and I'm still busy because I've been tinkering on the secret project of course but also balancing this channel the patreon like I'm still very busy but in the terms of actual game coverage I mean usually I'm like all over the place so it's been kind of nice but it's a surprising low which I, I didn't really expect but I'm sure I'll be thanking the games industry for giving us this time as a creator because once 2020 hits, I mean, that's where the real fall is, right? Early 2020. So that'll be interesting. But anyway, I wanted to give you guys the update on Fallout 76 Wastelanders and everything to come to this game. What do you think? Is Bethesda making the right choice? Am I a prophet or not? Let me know in the comments down below. <laughs> Other than that, follow me on Instagram, follow me on Twitter. Why did I say that backwards? Whatever. Those links are in the description down below, along with my Patreon. Do consider supporting that as it fuels all the content I create here. Stay sexy, stay active. I love you all. Peace.